Hello, budding biologists, and welcome to another exciting episode of General Biology Honors. Today, we are going to learn all about DNA, or deoxyribose nucleic acid. Hopefully, during this video, you will learn not only what deoxyribonucleic acid means, but who discovered it, what it does, and what it is made of. So who did discover DNA? Well, a lot of people say it's Watson and Crick, but they discovered the structure. They didn't discover the actual molecule. Those honors go to Johann Friedrich Meissner, Meischer. And he was a Swiss biologist, and he was actually working in a really small little lab that by today's standards was not too appealing. And he was looking at white blood cells, specifically leukocytes. And he found a lot of leukocytes in pus. Yeah, because that's what fights infections, right? Which is what a white blood cell does. So he needed a whole bunch, so he used bandages, and he actually would take this sort of scrapings from bandages and put them into a test tube and separate out the blood. And after a while, it would settle, and you'd have plasma on top, which is kind of the liquid part of blood. You'd have red blood cells on the bottom, which carry the oxygen. In the middle, you'd have these white blood cells and platelets. And so from this, he did took out that part and chemically changed it into a substance called nuclein, and that nuclein is nucleic acids now, and in 1869 he did this actual experiment. Um, then it was published and it was kind of a big deal. So what exactly is DNA? Well people didn't know for a long time, but eventually we figured out that it was this double helical structure that held all the genetic information for life. And we'll get into that in a lot of detail, but, but suffice to say, people didn't accept that at first. So they say it's a nucleic acid, and like all nucleic acids, it's made out of nucleotides. Nucleotides are the bricks that build the wall, if you will. And the wall is the DNA, and the, the bricks are the nucleotide. And put together, they make this double strand. So what exactly is a nucleotide, I hope you are asking? Well, it's a molecule that is made of three smaller molecules. It's a phosphate, a pentose sugar, and a nitrogenous base. And there are a couple of different kinds, there's several different kinds of nucleotides and nucleic acids, but we're gonna focus on DNA today. So here's a picture of it. Phosphate group on the left, the deoxyribose sugar, which is a pentose sugar in the middle, and the nitrogenous base, one of five, on the right. So the five nitrogenous bases are adenine, guanine, cytosine, thymine, and uracil. But uracil is not found in DNA. It is only found in RNA. We'll talk about that. So this is kind of how they line up, and they just stack on top of each other. One side's facing one direction, one side's facing down. And they stack up and they form bonds between each other to make these two swirls. Uh, if you look to the right, there's the chemical structures of your actual nitrogenous bases. And it's the order of these bases that essentially is the, the meaning of life. Maybe not the meaning, but the code of life. And the reason is, is because it holds all the instructions to make all the proteins that a cell needs. And those proteins make up structures and they do all the work. Not unlike somebody we know. So what does DNA actually do? Well, it has three specific jobs in a cell. The first job is it simply stores information. And that code that I talk about is the information. It stores that code or that order of nucleotides and keeps it safe. The second job is that it copies the information. So when a cell divides, each new cell has to have a copy of the DNA. It's DNA's job to make a copy of itself and make sure that copy is correct, and that's its next job. And the final job is that it has to transmit the information. It has to give the information to a part of the cell that can actually do something with it, which is the ribosome, and it turns it into a protein. And so DNA does all three of those jobs. It has lots of help along the way, but it does that. So let's look at a little more detail. DNA stores information as a code, and we call that code a genome. So you've heard me talk about the Human Genome Project. That's because that's the code for humans. It's for making humans. And a genome is comprised of lots of genes. The human genome has about 20,000 genes. And one gene holds the information to make just one protein. So it's one gene equals one protein. So if we have 20,000 genes, we have 20,000 proteins. And this information is kind of like a library, right? You have these books, and these books have all this information. Or nowadays, since the library's kind of going away, we have flash drives. 
The flash drives hold that information in a code, 0110001010. Well, DNA does the same thing, except instead of numbers, it does it with letters. And it's not really letters, it's really molecules. Each one of those letters represents a molecule. So the CTAA is cytosine, thymine, adenine, adenine. And the order of those molecules is what creates the gene and the instructions of which protein to make. And that's how it works. And we'll, we'll look in this in a lot more detail. So if you don't totally get it now, don't worry about it. But a single gene itself is made out of a few thousand nucleotides, anywhere from a thousand to three thousand. And the act of DNA copying itself is called replication. Okay, so this is job number two. And it takes its strand, it splits it in half, and it makes another copy that matches the half. So you end up with two strands, one with one old strand and one with one new strand. And this takes enzymes. Enzymes are proteins that, of course, are coded for by the DNA. And if you look in this picture, all the red is DNA being split and new strands made. All the blue and green and purple are enzymes doing all of the work. Now I'll show you a video of this at work in class. And this is, uh, but the important thing to know is those proteins are doing the job. So the last job of DNA is to transmit the information held on a gene to a ribosome that I just told you about that make proteins. And to do this, we need some sort of molecule that can carry it from the DNA to the ribosome because they're not in the same place in the cell. And that molecule is mRNA, which is another kind of nucleic acid. And this one has uracil in it. So if you can kind of see here, the DNA splits, the RNA is made on only one side, and then it goes to the ribosome to make the protein. And that process is called transcription. And it's done with enzymes and RNA, specifically messenger RNA, and it physically moves it. That's what this yellow string of popcorn looking thing is. The red again is the DNA, the blue is an enzyme, and the yellow is an mRNA, which goes away. So I hope you have a good understanding or beginning understanding of DNA. What you should have learned is what it means, who discovered it, what it's made of, and the three jobs that it does. If you have any questions, ask me in class. And if not, have a great day. Peace out, homie. Fish tacos.